Hello friends, welcome back to Compassion Camp. I am so excited that you have come back to join us again for our next week of virtual VBS. Um, today our theme is to the neighbor and we're gonna be learning about that. But first of all, I like to welcome my friends by name. So I have a couple of you guys that I wanna welcome by name, but first I will start by welcoming all of you guys. We're gonna look through our window. Today we're gonna look through our circle window. If you hear your name, make sure you wave and say hi to me. All right, you ready? Looking through my window, guess who I could see? I see all my friends, they're waving back at me. Hello. Hello friends, welcome to Compassion Camp. Let's change our window out today. Uh, we are going to switch it up to our red square. Ready? Listen for your name and make sure you say hello. Looking through my window, guess who I could see? I saw my friend Charlotte, she's waving back at me. Hello. Hello Charlotte, welcome to Compassion Camp. Let's trade our window out for our yellow triangle. Ready? Looking through my window, guess who I could see? I saw my friend George, he's waving back at me. Hello. Hi George, welcome to Compassion Camp. Let's go back to our blue circle and let's see what friend we're welcoming next. Ready? Looking through our window, guess who I could see? I saw my friend Lydia, she's waving back at me. Hello. Hello Lydia, welcome to Compassion Camp. All right, let's go back to our red square and say hello to another friend. Looking through my window, guess who I could see? I saw my friend Teddy, he's waving back at me. Hello. Hi Teddy, welcome to Compassion Camp. All right, back to our yellow triangle. Looking through my window, guess who I could see? I saw my friend Dylan, he's waving back at me. Hello. Hello, Dylan. Welcome to Compassion Camp. All right. So as we go along week by week, we will welcome more of our friends, but let's do one more welcome with our red square to all of our Compassion Camp friends. Ready? Looking through my window, guess who I could see? I saw all my friends, they're waving back at me. Hello. Hello friends, thanks so much for spending time with me at Compassion Camp. All right, so last week we started talking about compassion. We talked about having empathy when we see something that maybe we see someone feeling something, we feel it too. And then we want to do something to help that person out. Uh, so remember my example of a yawn? We see someone yawn. We often yawn too, right? And we also talked about what it feels like to step on a Lego. Oh, that's the worst. I can feel stepping on a Lego without having it Legos anywhere near me. So when we understand other people's uh, pain, it makes us have empathy, we feel it, and we want to do something for them. And today we're gonna talk about how having compassion and empathy, sometimes we need to be brave. Uh, so today's theme is to the neighbor, and a lot of it has to do with bravery. And I know a lot of you friends out there are super brave. So let me see your big brave muscles. All right, good work. Let's uh, give you guys some examples uh, because sometimes we see things and we think, man, I really wish I could help that out, but I'm not sure how, or I'm a little afraid to do that. So I'm gonna give you some examples of friends that might have 
uh, some ways to help others, and maybe you can help me figure out ways that they could, things that they could do to be brave and, and help other people. So my first example is Mia. Mia has extra food in her pantry. How could Mia be brave? She's not gonna eat the food, and she knows that there's other people out there that might be hungry. Oh, that's a good idea. Mia could share her food. She could donate it maybe here at the church uh, for the food pantry or maybe donate it to someplace uh, locally or uh, maybe she, she knows that uh, she's got a neighbor nearby that needs some food and she can just drop it off there. That's a great way that Mia can be brave and, and help someone out. All right, what about this one? I know a lot of my friends have been swimming lately. So Taylor is a lifeguard. When someone is struggling in the water, Taylor can be brave and what is something brave that lifeguards do? Right, they can save, he, Taylor can save the person or he can remind the person to go move down to where they can touch. Lifeguards help keep us safe at the pool. All right, here's another example of another friend who needs some help being brave. All right, Jaden sees a friend picking on a younger child. Jaden can be brave and what could Jaden do? Let me hear you. Yeah, Jaden could stand up for that child. That can be hard, can't it? Sometimes we're afraid that if we stand up for someone else, we might get picked on too. It takes a very brave person sometimes to stand up for someone who's being picked on. All right, here's another example. This one isn't about a student. It's not about a child. It's about an adult. Let's see if we can help this adult out. This adult's name is Ms. Perez. Ms. Perez notices her students are restless and need a break. Ms. Perez could be brave and what's something good that your teacher could do if everyone's having a hard time focusing and they need a break? You guys, what a great idea. I heard lots of good ideas. You could get up and move about a little bit, maybe play a game, sing a song. If your teacher has Go Noodle, that's a good brain break, right? Uh, those are all good things that Ms. Perez could do. Instead of continuing to try to teach, she could take a break with her students and get everyone to focus again. All right, here's one more. It's also an adult. So Dr. Wynn hears some people need medical care but cannot afford it. Dr. Wynn can be brave and yeah, he can treat those people anyway, right? That's a tricky one and something that adults could deal with, right? You don't have to worry about that as a preschooler. But there are lots of opportunities for us to be brave from the time we are very little until the time we are all grown up. Uh, and, and so there are times for your parents to get to be brave and times for you to get to be brave. I have seen a lot of brave people lately. I have seen brave people uh, working at grocery stores, brave people helping other people, brave people wearing masks in all sorts of situations to keep other people safe. Um, I have seen so many opportunities for people to be brave. So I hope you find some ways to be brave. Show me your big brave muscles again. Awesome, you guys look super brave. All right, we're gonna continue with our day with some music about being brave. All right, we're gonna introduce to you a song about being brave. It is called Brave Enough. Um, when you hear the word brave, make your big, strong, brave muscles. This song repeats a lot, so please feel free to join us or you can rewind and play again, um, but make sure you have those big, brave muscles ready to go. All right.
right, friends, sometimes our compassion helps us to make brave choices. And when we do, look out! God's power can restore our communities, our friendships, and ourselves. We're going to hear a story in just a moment about some friends who were really brave and showed compassion for their friends. Um, but first, let's start with a compassion prayer. We're going to do it this way. Put your hands over your heart and on your head because when we feel compassion, we feel it in our hearts and it makes us think of things to do. All right, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, your compassion always looked like courage. Strengthen our hearts with your bravery as we risk reach out and lift up our siblings near and far. Help us keep our eyes on you. Amen. All right, our story today comes from the book of Mark, chapter two, verses one through 12. This is one of my all-time favorite stories. I think it's really fun to imagine what was happening in this story. So as I read, I want you guys to think about what this might have looked like. All right. One day, Jesus visited someone's home. Everyone heard he was there. They were so excited to see him because they'd heard he'd healed and helped people be a part of their communities again. A friend who was paralyzed had his friends take him to see Jesus. Paralyzed means he couldn't walk and he couldn't even sit up. Uh, in this story, he was laying on a mat. Uh, so he had some real needs and he was hoping, I think, for healing from Jesus. When his friends got there, it was so crowded. There was no way to get Jesus through all the people. They had an idea. Good friends always have ideas. The friends climbed up onto the roof of the house and made a hole in the roof above where Jesus was. Then they carefully lowered their friend into the room. When Jesus saw their faith, he was encouraged. He told their friend, I see you and I love you. You are made whole to your community and your sins are forgiven. Now, some temple leaders called scribes were watching Jesus. When they heard him say this to his friend who was paralyzed, they were angry. They thought to themselves, who does Jesus think he is? Only God can say these things. Jesus could tell the scribes disagreed with him, so he said to them, I know what you're thinking right now, but what is easier, to say I see you and I love you, or to say get up and walk? I'll show you it is possible to do both. With compassion, Jesus turned to the friend who was paralyzed and said, get up, pick up your mat, and go home. You're healed now. He stood up amazed. He picked up his mat and went home with his friends. Everyone was so happy. They praised God because they had never seen anything like this before. So I hope you guys were thinking about all the brave things that those friends did. And maybe you have some friends that you would do some pretty brave and maybe even a little risky things uh, to help them out. Probably it's not going to involve tearing a hole in the roof, right? You have to remember that these were roofs from homes in biblical times. So they were like thatch roofs that you could dig a hole in, not like our shingled roofs today. Um, and also, um, just, just think about how much those friends wanted to get their friend who was hurt, who could not walk, to see Jesus. How much they wanted to risk to make sure that their friend could be healed and well and be a part of their community again, be able to do things with them again, be able to walk, be able to work. 
Uh, these are all things that this man now could do because Jesus healed him. And those friends were willing to take a big time risk to do that. I always think it's a fun story to imagine in my mind. I always think, I wonder if Jesus was like, hmm, what is that dust coming from the ceiling? Um, and I think that this is, this is just a really neat story to show how much um, friends will do to help each other out. Um, we might think we only need to be brave for big, scary things. We might think being brave is only for superheroes. But whether it's for a friend or a stranger, a family member or a neighbor, or even for ourselves, compassion helps us to be brave. Remember when I talked about standing up for a friend that is being picked on or, or a kid that's little, littler than us that's being picked on? That is something that you can have compassion about and to be brave for. Sometimes being brave means being like the friends uh, in this story that we read by showing up for someone, helping to carry their burdens, helping them get where they need to be and standing with them. Sometimes being brave means being like the friend who was paralyzed by sharing your own story and asking for what you need. Think about how brave that paralyzed man was, making his own request to ask for help. Sometimes that's a scary thing too. And sometimes being brave means being like Jesus by fully seeing and accepting a person just as they are. Friends, thank you so much for thinking about this story with me. I hope it's something that you talk about with your families. Um, and that you think about when you have opportunities to be brave and help your friends out. Hi friends. Okay, so today we are going to do our compassion in action, which is going to be a hug. So we are going to be sending that to someone, either a friend, a neighbor, grandparent, someone who you haven't been able to hug, or someone who you think needs a little bit of encouragement right now so they can be brave. So how you're going to make your hug is you're going to take a piece of paper and you're going to trace your hand on the piece of paper just like this. Once you have your hand traced, you can cut it out, and I already did my hands ahead of time, so I can do, show you guys a little bit quicker. So I have my two hands here, and I'm going to take a piece of string, which is as long as my arms are, so it's like I'm actually giving the person a hug, and I'm going to tape it to the hands. I'm going to take the one, and tape it right here, and the other, and tape it right here. So then on the other side, you can write a note to whoever you're giving, the, you're giving your hug to. I'm going to be giving my hug to Pastor Mike to welcome him to the church, just to make him feel welcome. Okay, so I'm going to write, welcome to St. Matthew's. And you can always have your parents write this out or a sibling. So I'm going to put my hands together and put it into an envelope addressed to the person so that I can give it to them or you can write their address and send it to them. There's the hug that he made. Hey friends, thanks so much for joining me today for Compassion Camp. We can't wait to have another day of Compassion Camp with you again next week. Uh, we look forward to saying hello to you all, teaching you a new song, and teaching you a new uh, Bible story and a new compassion in action. So we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks so much for spending time with us.